So this is the fourth video in a multi-part series where I play around with different ground effect vehicle designs and try to figure out if it's possible to make an aircraft that is highly dependent on the ground effect to fly. Or at the least, an aircraft that really takes full advantage of the negative feedback loop that makes an aircraft want to stay low to the ground. In this video, I build and test a ground effect vehicle concept I came up with that is designed to only fly if it's in close proximity to a surface. But first, big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. More on them later. So here's the idea I came up with. Let's start with the ground, and a lifting surface. Our lifting surface doesn't need to have an airfoil to generate lift. It only needs to have a positive angle of attack. That's why foam planes with flat wings can still fly. So our lifting surface can generate lift both when it's in and out of ground effect. Of course, it's going to generate more lift when it's in ground effect, which is great, but what I want to do is prevent it from generating any lift when it's out of ground effect. I'm going to do this by turning it into a wedge. The top part basically just cancels out the bottom part, and from an aerodynamics perspective, there is zero angle of attack, so it should generate no lift when out of ground effect. But the cool part is, we still have air getting rammed into the bottom and compressing up against the ground, so there's a higher pressure on the bottom than on the top, which means there should be more lift than downforce, and it should fly. But once it gets too high, the ram effect is gone and it will come back down, since no lift is being generated by any positive angle of attack. I figured the air behind the wedge would be turbulent, and I wasn't exactly sure where it would reconverge, since the ground being there was kind of making things asymmetrical. If it converged higher up, the effective angle of attack would be negative, and that would generate too much downforce. If it ended up converging too low, the effective angle of attack would be positive and it would generate too much lift. So in order to get the angle of attack to stay neutral, I decided to add a cone on the back and try to make it converge in the center. Now the problem is that this negative angled surface in the back is probably going to pull air upwards and create a low pressure suction zone in the back, which could cancel out all the ram effect. To hopefully prevent this, I added a step to separate the air away from the rear surface. This step is also very important for hydrodynamic reasons when it's in the water. Without it, it would not be able to get up on plane, like a speedboat or seaplane floats. This is all quite a novel concept, and I've certainly never seen it tried before, so let's test it out. I built the whole thing out of 6mm Depron. The wing, if you can call it that, is basically just a big elongated diamond shape with some ribs on the inside to make it stiff. I put some little triangular floats on the front to help keep the nose up out of the water, since the rear of the aircraft is going to be lower than the front and have way more buoyancy. Then I added a fuselage along with two motors on a pivoting mechanism for par thrust. Par thrust is when you pivot the motors up to blow air under the wing to help get it up off the water. But in this case, it was actually mostly just useful to help pick up the nose out of the water before building up airspeed. After it gets up off the water, the motors get pivoted back down to cruise. I installed a little omnibus flight controller running ArduPilot just for that sweet sweet fly-by-wire stabilization. This is only doing attitude stabilization. There's no rangefinder altitude stabilization going on or anything like that. After configuring the flight controller, it was ready to go for the first test on water. Okay, first float test. I feel like it's probably gonna float really nose heavy. Oh no, the propeller just touched the water. Oh, what have I done? I've made a disaster. If I held it while starting with the motors tilted up, I was able to keep the motors up out of the water. Look at the baby ducks, wow. Okay, it weather vanes into the wind, so I have to start with the motors in the up position, and then I pop the nose up, and then I slowly put the motors down to the mid position, and then it kinda goes, yay! Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's a bunch of teenage gooses, amazing. And then over here we have a bunch of even smaller ones. The geese are always so interested in my aircraft. I know they want to attack. There we go. Yeah, boy. Oh, I'm getting too far out there. It's not turning around. I'm gonna have to wait for it to blow all the way back here. That's the same stick my airfoil flare boat ran into. Oh yeah, bring the nose around, baby. Come on, oh wow, there we go. Booyah, bringing it home quick. So today I added another step in the front 
to help keep the nose up uh, off the water. That's not ideal. I think it's probably blocking a little bit of the ram air that's flowing in there, but whatever, we'll try it. Will it float better? So this is gonna be tricky because I have to transition the motors down while the nose is up. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the mid position now. Wow. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, it worked! Oh, it worked! That's so good. But the motors were not all the way down. They were still at a bit of an angle there. So it wasn't fully like ram effect, ground affecting. <laughs> It was just kind of like par thrust affecting, I get. <laughs> I need to set the motor transition speed to be slower. Wow, day one, this shit works. Or day two, I guess. Okay, props all the way flat. Wow. Wow. So I think this thing would definitely be able to fly, but it really does not want to leave ground effects. Like it doesn't just want to flip up like all the other ones. And motor's down. Yeah, I can definitely fly. It does not fly well though. <laughs> As you can see, it definitely has the ability to fly out of ground effect. This is no surprise, because if you give any chunk of foam a high enough thrust to weight ratio, it'll fly. But the amazing thing here is that the angle of attack needed to fly up out of ground effect is quite a bit higher than the angle of attack needed to fly in ground effect, so you really have to give it a whole lot of pitch up command in order to exit ground effect. Even throttle alone is still not enough to exit ground effect. If you just go to full throttle, it still just hugs the ground and rides on the equilibrium between ram effect lifting it up and the lack of aerodynamic lift holding it down. Or the negative pitching moment holding it down. Could be both. That's incredible. It really does exactly what I designed it to do. It just like does not want to fly higher than a few inches. That is epic. Yeah, it really does not want to fly out of ground effect. That is so cool. So this thing is clearly working great, but if you look closely, it appears to be flying at a slightly positive angle of attack. So I do think there's some traditional lift going on here, but also clearly a lot of the ram effect, because it does have a strong natural tendency to hug the ground. Wow, it just like thorts itself right when it gets to about six inches high. That is so cool. On that last run, one of the cells in the battery drops down to like 1.5 volts. So I just went home real quick, got a new battery. This one's a little heavier, so we'll see how that does. But I also made some modifications. I added these little skirts here to the bottom to kind of help hold that ram air bubble pocket in there. And then I also cut the tip off of this front little wedge because it seemed like when this front part was hitting the water, it was really bouncing a lot. So I think making that a little bit flatter will prevent it from bouncing. So we'll see how this works. I didn't notice any direct improvement from the side skirts that I added, but the trimmed nose skid did allow it to fly lower to the water without just skipping on the nose. So that was a big improvement. That's flying right there. That's no real weight. It's all just air drop wash. Then, as usual, the conformal coated flight controller got water damaged, so I took that out and replaced it with the newer one. And this time, I waterproofed it with this stuff here, which so far has seemed to work really well. It's a silicone sealant that is made for electronics and is non-corrosive. So then I installed it back into the aircraft and reconfigured all the ArduPilot stuff. Bye! Okay, got the new flight controller in here today. We might have to do a little bit of retuning. Full manual mode right now. So here I'm testing it out in full manual mode, with no auto level or angular stabilization going on whatsoever. <laughs> Kerplunk. As you can see, it is still very much capable of flying in ram effect, just a hair above the surface of the water. But without the active pitch stabilization, it's much more difficult to keep it within a range of like 1 to 3 inches of altitude, like it was doing before. 
With too much up elevator command, it does flip up out of ground effect like so many other ground effect vehicles do. But with that being said, if your goal is just to fly a hair above the water, then it really works great and does not need any pitch stabilization. But if you want to get up any higher, for rougher water or whatever, then pitch stabilization is pretty crucial. I think this is kind of because it rides on an equilibrium point between the ram effect lifting it up and the flight controller keeping the nose down. This allows it to get up to the higher end of ground effect without the nose just wanting to flip up due to the center of pressure shift that occurs. In fact, if you want to fly in the 6 to 12 inch range, then you really have to pull back hard on the pitch stick. Okay, I'm going to try and give us an up elevator and fly it just to see what happens. Then the second you let go, it immediately drops back down to an inch or less. Oh wow. If you let off the elevator, it immediately goes down. That's really the beauty of this plane. It just wants to stay in ground effect. You can just jam the throttle up, not touch the elevator at all, and it just goes. Oh, saved it. Here's some shots of it just hovercrafting around with par thrust blowing air under the wing. Pretty fun. It can Tokyo drift quite well. We're starting to get waterlogged. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. So this thing obviously works great as a novel ram effect vehicle demonstration, but is it at all practical? Well, in the full scale world, the whole point of ground effect vehicles are for increased fuel efficiency and payload capacity. Now, I haven't done any measurements to back this up, but I would guess the wedge-shaped wing design I'm using is pretty inefficient, so it probably wouldn't have any real fuel saving benefits over a normal airplane. Unless you have insanely smooth water and are able to fly just inches high all the time, but that's kind of rarely the case. But again, I'm just guessing that this thing isn't very efficient. I could be wrong. significant amount of up elevator and it's still not going up. Here I was experimenting with copious amounts of pitch up command. That's full up elevator. And you can see it definitely flies, but I certainly would not want to take it to the flying field. It really does not want to maintain flight due to the flight controller trying to pitch back down all the time. Which is good, that's what we want. Here are some shots of it going on slightly rougher water. Still works great. But then I gave it a test on some tall grass, and it was not able to build up enough speed to really do its thing. That's not too surprising though. The marbly textured wake that it leaves in its path is entirely from the downwash, or the air getting pressurized against the surface of the water. You can see where the downwash leaks out of the sides too, as the wingtip vortexes are formed. I've got an Insta360 GO camera mounted right here. It's gonna be under the water line, so that should be an interesting view if I can take off. So this is a pretty lightweight aircraft. It weighs 1.7 pounds or 770 grams. So far with this ground effect vehicle project I've been building lightweight aircraft that are designed to stay in the ground effect for aerodynamic reasons like this one, or because of the lack of motor power like the flying sled. Now the opposite approach to ground effect is to build something that is simply too heavy to fly like a normal airplane, but hopefully is still capable of flying in ground effect. One of the big challenges with something like this is that it's going to be super fast and you'll probably need much more space to test it. Also, it has to be extremely hydrodynamically efficient because it takes a lot of power to get a heavy vessel up on plane. 
I'd like to visit this approach at some point, but probably won't get around to it anytime soon. However, in the next video of this series, I'll start adding more weight to this ground effect vehicle and see how its flight characteristics are changed. And then after that, I'll put an FPV system on it and see if it has any practical use as a long-range FPV platform, so stay tuned. Recently, I made a new page on my website showing all the ground effect vehicles I've ever made. This only took me a few minutes, thanks to Squarespace and their awesome website building tools. They offer all sorts of super aesthetic templates that make it easier than ever to create a stunning website all by yourself. Squarespace's capabilities don't stop there. They also offer a full set of e-commerce tools for online businesses. This is what I used for the Snowcat project. Recently, Colin and I packaged up all of the second batch of RC Snowcat kits and shipped them out. Squarespace made this so much easier for us for every step of the process. Customers could buy the Snowcat kits off my Squarespace website, and then the order shows up on the orders page where I can see which ones have been fulfilled or not. Now Squarespace has new features that allows you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts, too. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash rctestflight to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and see you for the next Ground Effect Vehicle video.